Hey, in this fifth video I want to talk about printing and how we can output stuff to the user. I would also talk about comments and casting as we go. I would also like to start transitioning away from the interactive mode, which is really, really useful for just playing around and getting used to things, and we'll still use it at some point. But I want us to use script mode because we want to be writing proper programs which we can download and run. So I'm going to keep using Replit, but you can also do this in the shell. So in Replit, on the left-hand side, this is our script mode, and on the right-hand side is our interactive shell. We can still use the interactive shell, but now we can start to write code on script mode, uh, in script mode and run it and it will show the output over here. So really the interactive shell now is where the output is shown. You can imagine the user running your program on their computer. This would, this uh, shell is what shows what they would see. Let's start with outputting data because we've done that already in our first video where we typed in print hello world like that and we did it in the interactive shell so we didn't see these colors. The colors often come from the, well, they come from the IDE, so in this case it's a Replit Online IDE, but alternatively you could do it in Idle, which is also colors. The colors are different, so here, um, let's just do hello. Here, print goes to purple, in Replit it goes to blue. That color scheme is just up down to the creators of the IDEs. The color schemes is to help us. It doesn't help the computer, there being different colors. It's a way for us to distinguish between different constructs in Python. So this color here, blue in Replit, this refers to a built-in function and we'll see many more of these as we go. So in script mode, I've written my print hello world. I've done some blank lines here, they're fine, nothing's contained on them. I now can hit run up here and run the code. Before I was just pressing enter and it would do it for us, but that's the interactive shell. It works differently to script mode and we get hello world here. You'll notice it's a bit slower sometimes on Replit at least to run this. Um, that's why the interactive shell can be sometimes better, but for longer programs, it, it doesn't, uh, it's different. So we've got hello world, same idea in Py in idle, except to get to your script mode, we can go to file, new file, and this window which pops up, which has gone on my other screen, is where we would write our code instead. And if you want to replicate the same sort of look as um, on Replit and have it side by side, we could just drag it across and have a split screen like that. Same idea here. So I've typed in my code on the left hand side of the script mode but now you've got to make sure you go to run and run module and then it will ask you to save it, you save your file and then it will run in the shell. So it's a bit more of a faff honestly doing it in idle but there are advantages to do it offline as well. One of the advantages of doing it in idle is that you've got that file saved on your computer. If you want to get the file which is stored on Replit you go over here and download a zip. All of your files will be on the left hand side in this REPL they call it. You download it as a zip, extract it and your file will be there and if you want to give it to someone else that's one way you can do it. Anyway, so printing. So what printing does at its core is take whatever is inside these brackets and output it to the user, output it in the form of text on the user screen. So this hello world here was actually outputted not by Python but by whatever program Replit uh, is right, whatever language Replit is running on. The equivalent of a print statement in that language was used to show hello world on the screen. All the stuff here was shown to us as users with some equivalent of a print statement. Except that most programs we are used to are what we call graphical user interfaces. You'll notice how in the initial learning of Python we're just going to use command line interfaces which are quite different to what we are used to which is where we have in a shell just output lines and we put in some input and it will react like that. So programs we're making at the start are very different to programs we're used to but Python can be used to make the fancy graphical programs once you know the basics. So currently inside that hello world we've got a string. We can also print say an integer, it's five, a whole number. We can also print uh, say five, um, minus 5.5 .5, like that. And you'll notice when I'm typing stuff in, at least in Replit, not so much in Idle, although Idle does it occasionally, a box pops up. This is trying to help us by giving more details about Python, which is which can be quite useful. It's showing us here what else we can put inside string, a, 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 a print function beyond just a value, which is useful. Um, but you can ignore it for the time being, just click away. And now we can run this and it will do the same thing. You can see each print statement is doing it on a separate line. If you particularly want to get rid of this, you can instead add a comma after your first value you are trying to print. And as it says actually in this helpful prompt, if we type end like this and go equals, we can supply what we call a parameter to end is a variable which is submitted to this function. And we can instead of the default type in say an empty string 
like that will have a space and now if I run it will notice that hello world is followed by five because for the hello world print statement is not ending on a new line it's ending on just a space and so there's a space between that hello world and the five say we have some shopping application and want to output the price we could do something like an output saying I don't know if the price is um, five pounds or even we could have the price is some variable called price which a variable would be replaced at runtime maybe with an input so what I've done here I've done a hash symbol what you'd see a hashtag and say Twitter this is what we call a comment so a comment is really good because a comment is where we can kind of type anything we want to but without it actually turning up in our actual program. So if I run this now, nothing will appear here because a comment is completely ignored by the computer. So a comment is good if you're wanting to write a message if you, to yourself or to someone else. They're also really important to explain what your code is doing because often code can be a bit complex and if you're sharing it with someone else, a comment can help make sense. So anyway, let's say we're trying to get this output. The price is whatever this price variable is. Let's say this price variable for the time being is just five pounds maybe. So an integer five. And if we want to print this out, we could do print five. Uh, or we could do, sorry, print price, because five is assigned to price. And so when I do print price, it replaces price with five, which is what's been saved. And so we'll just get five here. But this isn't matching what we have here. So instead, we can do something like um, we could do the price is pound, because all of that is a string. This up here is not an integer. It's a different data type. We've got to surround it in quotes. The price is not a string, it's an integer. And so we can use the comma again in the print statement to separate out two values. So if I run this now, we will get the price is pound sign space five. So almost what I wanted up here. Using print statements with commas in is really good if you have different data types you're wanting to combine somehow. Because if we did something like uh, the price is pound, and then after that quote we did a plus, and the price, this will not work because five is an integer and we're trying to add an integer to a string which it doesn't like. We can fix this by doing something called casting, casting from an integer back to a string by surrounding this price with an SDR function. So like a print, this is built into Python, is done to help us. You've got to make sure you have enough brackets because really we are evaluating this first and then including it in our print statement and now this will work. The advantage here is that we are getting rid of this space after pound sign because by default the way it works naturally is when you have a comma it replaces that comma with the separator and by default the separator is a space. If you really wanted to get rid of this like with the end extra parameter we type in sep and set this to be an empty string and it gets rid of a separator working as a space. A space is a character, we just don't see it on screen. So generally, casting is converting data types and we do this by using a shorthand version of data types. So we can do, for example, int, let's do this as a comment again. We could do, for example, int is um, with five as a character. This will convert int, this will convert the string version of five into the integer version of five. So we can use it in calculations, say. That's going to be useful in a second when we do inputs and the vice versa we can do SDR and convert 5 back to that character. Now before we look at inputting pause this video and have a look at these questions and I'd recommend you try some of this code out yourself and have a little play around.